Hi, welcome back. I'm going to talk about some uh, some bench working tools. Uh, as you can see, a variety in front of me. Um, these are sort of chiefly for removing material. Um, and I'm going to start at this end. Uh, this is a bench vise. Opens and closes with the twist of a handle here. Um, you do get some which have got sort of a quick release. Um, you get sort of universal ones, if you like, which pivot and they twist. You know, this is this is just a standard bench vice, um, and it is clearly for for holding components as you're working on them. Um, next up is a saw. This is a hacksaw. A um, couple of things. Well, this is the handle here. This is the frame, and this is the blade. A um, couple of things about the blade: you should uh, make sure that the teeth are always pointing forwards, and that there aren't teeth missing purely to make uh, your own life easier as an operator. Um, I'll just give you a quick demonstration, actually. I have here a small block of aluminium. And I want to remove this corner. So what I'll do, I'll just place it in the vise. In general, you want your uh, component to be as low in the vise as possible. The reason for that is the higher up, the higher up it is, the, uh, the more effort you're putting into vibration. The lower it is, the more secure it is, the less work you're putting in yourself. Now, to start with the, the sawing, firstly, safety glasses, super cool safety glasses. Uh, to start with the uh, sawing, just gonna have my thumb alongside the blade and drag it back and forth a couple of times. Once I've got a little notch, I'll start working my way down with both hands. So the stance you have is a sort of a nice steady stance. Um, whichever is your dominant hand is holding the handle, and your other hand is to support the front of the frame. Um, as I mentioned, the, the teeth point forwards, so your effort should be in the forward stroke. Okay, so it looks a bit like this. It's always worth stopping, making sure that you're still following your line, and then carrying on. And once you get to where you want to be, it's about there. Just remove the saw and flip it around. The uh, the reason for flipping flipping it around is um, to allow gravity to help you. You don't want to try and have claw sideways when um, you know a lot of your work is done if you're going vertically just by you know virtue of gravity. So again, thumb alongside, line your blade up. Couple of these scratches to start, and then we're ready to go. Now you can see this is higher up out the vise, so there will be more noise. Now it's worth noting that that piece of metal that's just flown over there is going to be extremely hot. Um, metal to metal makes heat. I'm sure you'll know that. Okay, so that's sawing, uh, forward teeth, make sure none are missing, effort in the forward stroke. Um, next up, we've got some files. Now, uh, the files, again, they've got teeth on them, and they're forward pointing teeth. Don't know if you can see here. Um, these are sort of, uh, there's two, two rows of teeth, one going this direction, and one going this direction. It's called double cut. Um, all the files you'll find here are double cut. There are also sing single cut um, files. Um, the further apart the spacing on the teeth of the files, um, you know, further apart spacing will give you a rougher cut. You'll move more material in one go. Um, they do have names, sort of the roughest one, furthest apart teeth spacing is called a coarse file, 
obviously. Um, the next one along is called a bastard file. Don't know why, it just is. Uh, after that, you have a second file and then a smooth file. I think beyond that, there's a dead smooth file as well. Um, the latter will remove tiny, tiny amounts of material, um, but achieve much better finish. So with this, this particular one, it's a flat file. You know, engineers like to name things very simply. So flat, this is half round. This is a square file, a triangular file, and a round file. So if you were needing to open up a hole, you'd use a round file. If you were needing to square up a hole, use a square file. If you're needing to get, get into a corner, a square or a triangular file, you want to do large surface, large areas, that's where your flat and your half round come in. Half round is also good for sort of bigger radiuses as well. Um, I'm going to keep going with the flat file. Um, if I needed to flatten off the top of this material here, clearly the material is larger than the file is. So I'll need to employ a technique which is called cross filing, which means starting here as a push across, ending up here. So again, safety glasses on. And the technique is very similar to sawing. Starting here, a little bit of guide, guidance with the front hand, and I'm pushing across. And that already is pretty smooth. You're then going to end up with some burrs along the edge here. But they can be removed with the file also. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, the other advan uh, advantage with this particular flat file is on one end, one end edge, uh, you have got some, some, some teeth. And on this one, there are no teeth. So if you're needing to file into a corner, you use the no teeth up against the wall if you like. So it won't cut further into the, the edge. So you can go that way. And again, um, for filing, like sawing, you always want to be doing it in a downwards plane. So loosen that off, flip it around. Again, as low in the vice as you can, nice and tight. Flat edge up against the wall. It's always worth, with sawing and filing, it's worth stopping, getting down to eye level and making sure that you're not beyond where you're wanting to cut. And that's filing. One thing that happens with filing, you may be able to see it here, um, the, the in between the teeth gets filled up with, um, with the material that you've been working, um, particularly softer materials. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in this case, aluminium, so it will clog up the teeth quite quickly. Uh, that process is called um, pinning, and to remove the pinning, we use something called a file card. File card is it's just like a brush, it's got wire bristles. Um, and they're quite short, so quite stiff. And how we're going to remove it, it's very simply, press your file up against something solid. And then at the angle the teeth move, at the, at the angle that the teeth are, brush back and forth. And swap around. There we go. That's how you pin a file in the file card. Um, next we have some chisels. We don't really use chisels nowadays. Um, it's a very ancient technology. Um, carpenter, carpenters use them, cabinet makers. It's unlikely you will ever use them in metal work, um, but they are here so we will show you how to work them. How to work them like they're a machine, you know. Um, 
nowadays, yeah, we have milling machines and things which are far more efficient, less labor intensive, more accurate. There's no reason still to use files. Uh, but here's a demonstration anyway. Um, again, very original naming system. This is a flat chisel because it's flat. This is a cross cut chisel. You'll notice it's like, kind of like an arrowhead shape. Um, and the, the sharp part is this way across it. Uh, it's for cutting across the, the, the face of a, of a, of a component. Um, and that'll allow you to make a nice sort of channel. Um, and this one here, I don't know if you can see that, it's a diamond chip, a giant, it's a diamond tipped chisel. Um, and it will allow you to cut a V groove across the plane. So methods for using this, use one of these, which I'm sure you're familiar with. It's called, of course, a persuader. And with your safety glasses on, you sort of knock down. And then once you're into the material, you bring it down a little bit and you can go across the way. So knock down. And once you're in, there you go. And that removes the material there. Um, if you'd like the um, the other ones, the cross cut, just open up the vise. Got to be quite tight in the vice here. And let's see, cross cut chisel, hidden stick. Hidden stick is another name for this. Yeah. Persuader, staff motivation tool, many names. Um, exactly the same process. Start by going down into the material and bring it across. And so if you'll get across the face that way. So down. It's a nice groove in the, in the metal. And lastly, we've got the, um, the diamond tip. So, same, down, and then a lot. That gives us a nice little V. That's all for the bench working tools just now. Thank you so much.